Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Demise True Draco deck, or just, people just call it True Dracos, whatever. It's essentially a card of Demise deck, uh, utilizing no extra deck for this version, using the domain of the True Monarchs to give, you know, soft locks, well not even really soft locks, just 100% locks of the extra deck down with Masterpiece and Dynamite Knuckle and stuff like that. Masterpiece as a card is an incredibly degenerately designed card, whereas you're able to make it unaffected by two very key card mechanics in the game being either monster spell or trap any combination of the two and that ultimately just already leads to some problems in terms of having to deal with this card although it is outable by very a very large quantity of things in the form of like kaijus and stuff like that but then on top of that if that was not enough you have access into banishing any of the cards that you used to summon it and popping cards during either player's turn so it's essentially like Towers plus Dark Destroyer, kind of. It's like a more powerful Cosmo Dark Destroyer in the fact that you get to, instead of making it untargetable and undestroyed, you can make it unaffected by just generic amounts of things and then allow it to pop anything at any time to protect itself. But so, this is the Demise True Draco deck. This is one of the best decks in the OCG currently. Um, now, I'm playing the Domain version, but that's actually just like not really as popular as I think that it is as much as what I'm seeing in the OCG it's like not the most popular version because in like the in the situation of this deck in the mirror match domain is really weak uh, so there's that but I'm playing domain for this uh, for this specific video just to just because it's a it's a valid part of the deck if you wanted to play this deck with domain in it and just not have to worry about an extra deck um, if you're like a more budget oriented player and you already have to spend money on this deck you could definitely do that as an option um, you could do other things as well you could shave out some cards um, like uh, like I don't know the Majesty Maiden and the upstart and play more traps if you want to do that uh, there's definitely a lot of things you can do to change this deck around but this deck is meant to basically turbo into masterpiece and your tribute summoned guys that's literally what you're trying to do you're trying to turbo into masterpiece you're trying to use all these tribute summons to just gain advantage on your opponent's turn and your own turn for that matter uh, by using these continuous spells and traps multiple times and all that sort of nonsense and they all have amazing effects and there's amazing amounts of longevity with this deck because of disciples of the true draco phoenix and succession and revival of the true kings like there's just a lot of good things to be said about this deck and this engine in general true dracos is one of the most well fleshed out archetypes that i've seen designed in a long time but anyway enough rambling about this deck let's just jump straight into the game and see how it does i've never played this deck before and i'm super curious to see like just how well and how user friendly it is to pilot when you put a little bit of thought into it uh, when you just go into a game so let's just jump straight in and see how it handles all right so this is going to be one of the first times i've ever played with this specific variant of the deck but i'm very familiar with how it is meant to operate i mean you're going to be trying to do your tribute summons and all that nonsense uh, for your uh, stuff. So, okay. This is Stag, and I believe Stag was the person that played Romas last time that we played. Uh, so I believe he might be doing that again. Um, in which case, this deck is actually pretty well positioned to play against that because of the fact that all of these uh, spells do double duty as MSTs when they are sent to the graveyard. Um, so that's actually just amazing. That's one of the things I like the most about this deck, is that this deck has such... Well, I guess not really this deck, uh, more so this archetype, the true Draco archetype, is that it's very well versed with all of the accessibility it has into disruption with the traps, being able to pop monsters, and with uh, and with the uh, spells being able to be MSTs. But okay, so instead we are seeing Sylvans, which I actually really, really agree with. I love Sylvans. I believe he's playing Sylvans because of the fact that Sylvan Princess Sprite has been confirmed for release in... Um, in uh, the Maximum Crisis imports uh, via those leaks. Okay, so Peacekeeper. So Peacekeeper is able to bring back Lone Fire. Sylvans do a lot of really cool things uh, as far as like what their play strings allow, and it's definitely a deck that I really enjoy. I played it a little bit in the past. I would probably play it again now because we've gotten more stuff in the form of, uh, like, I guess Balbaboon could be played in the deck. Uh, we've got Glow Up Bulb now as a tuner. Damn, he opened Lone Fire Soul Charge. But, and he opened Lone Fire Soul Charge, but it actually just might not matter. Uh, but he's able to get back three Lone Fires. <laughs> wow. It actually might not matter, depending on what his ending board is. I mean, there's probably going to be a Titanic Galaxy in there somewhere. Uh, but the thing is that Titanic Galaxy is going to be something that could be baited, I guess? I don't know. Let's see what his entire board can end up being. Uh, but Lone Firing into the Rose Lover, then Lone Firing into Dandelion. 
and then lone firing here for something. Is he able to make Nat Beast? Is this an Earth? He is able to make Nat Beast right here with Glow Bulb, Rose Lover, and Dandelion. Um, so that's a bit of an issue that I'm going to have to deal with uh, if he does that, if he sees that play. And it doesn't look like he's doing that, so no, Hyper Librarian here and getting his win tokens. So I don't think I need to worry about Nat Beast anywhere in the immediate future unless he has some way to summon Sylvan Princess, uh, not Princess, uh, Sylvan, um, what's its fucking name? Um, it's the level 4 one that literally nobody plays except to go into Nat Beast. It's a level 4 Earth and it's a normal summon. Um, I don't even know. I can't remember. But so this comes back as a four. He's got this formula. He's drawn two. Uh, right then. So he's playing a very synchro oriented Sylvan deck, which is not something that I particularly necessarily enjoy theoretically. I just I think that like the believe in the trees deck uh, to overlay and stuff like that might just be better, uh, just because it's more streamlined. But, let's see, this thing, uh, when your life points is higher than your opponent's, all plant monsters gain 500 attack and defense. Uh, but that's definitely not the case, he's paid 3k. Um, and then once per turn, if you gain life points, target one face-up uh, one face-up card your opponent controls, that face-up card has its effects negated. Okay. So the question is now, what is he going to be doing with this board that he's generated off of Lone Fire Soul Charge? Because Lone Fire Soul Charge, just with two Lone Fires in the past, Lone Fire Soul Charge plus the field spell, by the way, um, would usually be able to do things like, um, would usually be able to do things like, uh, like be able to make, you know, a couple of rank 8s plus a Stardust Spark. Um, that's like around 2014 Nationals time frame when this deck used to be really good. Uh, Sylvan Charity. Well, I'm just so curious as to why these pictures aren't loading in. It's definitely not my internet connection because everything's going really fast, um, as far as, uh, stuff. So, Flower Knight. Flower Knight is that one I was trying to think of. Yes, this is the only, this is what you play specifically to summon Naturia Beast. And a Cherub Sprout. Uh, okay, so this entire, this entire board looks so weird. <laughs> Let's be completely honest here. This entire thing looks so weird and breakable. Uh, I don't know if that was the best utilization of, uh, of Soul Charge. Um, but so, I've done that, so this mandatory triggers. Um... So now he has no way to negate anything. Um, I've got two Dragonic Diagrams, so I could um, I can use my duality here. I'm not too worried about it. I just want to dig into something uh, really quickly and easily. So we'll get that Dynamite Knuckle uh, because what I'll be able to do is I'll just be able to set one of uh, I'll be able to set the succession uh, and pop this, summoning the Knuckle, and then if it's something that's chainable or if he uses the formula or anything like that, then I'll be able to get the trap out of deck, which I can tribute for Masterpiece. Uh, so that seems like it'll be fine. I can always draw a diagram into uh, Miramune as well. There's a few different options. Uh, this hand is kind of weird, but it's still got a few different options. Now I'm just doing this, like this, specifically, in this order. I could have probably activated it and done its uh, its additional tribute summon effect, uh, but eh, <laughs> there's no real reason. Uh, well, there is a reason um, to do so. I'm actually just lying. Uh, but we can just deal with it in a different way as uh, as it goes. But so I can pop the masterpiece out of my hand, uh, search Miramune, and then I can Dragonic Diagram pop, search um, a trap, and then get uh, search for uh, masterpiece again, uh, and then basically clear out my hand so that this card of demise can work. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this card of demise off. Uh, so we'll get the Miramune, and then we'll use Dragonic Diagram popping Miramune. And then we'll uh, be able to search for Masterpiece off the Miramune's search. And then we'll be able to search for the trap off of the Dragonic Diagram. So we'll do this. And then the trap will allow me to pop one of these cards. Uh, and then possibly trigger the, uh, the Dynamite Knuckle. Because uh, I'm going be to be targeting his, his uh, formula. Because that's the only card I'm like worried about. Uh, as far as a thing. And I'm going to set this... I've already normal summoned, actually. I just did this completely wrong. I've, I've literally talked about his play string being, like, not correct. <laughs> but then I just did this play line completely wrong. Whoops. Um, but it's fine. This is completely salvageable. I definitely should have activated that spell, used its secondary effect to get the additional uh, normal. If anything, that would have baited the, uh, the Twin Twister, potentially. Uh, this is bad. And now I can't even activate this card of demise. Um, well, I can. But I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Um, 
because I'm going to be getting rid of a masterpiece again. This was a bad idea. You know what? Fuck it. No, gu no guts, no glory. Okay, there we go. <laughs> True Draco succession. <laughs> um, so what I can do is I can... I've already sent one of the spells to Grave. Uh, what I could do is I could send Dynamite Knuckle to Grave or the tra and the Trap, and then that would be three for True Draco Succession. Uh, so that's what we will, uh, that is what we will do. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is Tribute Summon first uh, for Masterpiece. I'm going to do it on Monster and uh, Trap. Uh, no. Use the Monster, please. There we go. Because um, I don't really care about the Dynamite Knuckle um, particularly that much, especially if I'm going to be getting draws uh, in the way that I'm going to be getting them. And so this also protects me from like something like Black Rose, and also it's just huge because it is affected by spells, but um, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue. But this lets me draw three, uh, terraforming, and then this thing is here. Uh, I can activate my desires here to just draw into more cards. So I've got more traps that I can set. Uh, what did I banish? I banished a dynamite knuckle, which is fine. I can just put the other ones back. I banished uh, two more of the revival of the true kings. So that's a bit irritating. Uh, but at least it's workable. So now we'll just set these, and what I'll be able to do here is I can terraforming into domain and activate it. Uh, not really necessary, but at the same time, might as well, right? This is going to go away, unfortunately, uh, because it was drawn, but this domain is now, uh, is now alive and on his stuff. And so Apocalypse of the True Dracos... Uh, allows me to do um, do some stuff as far as tribute summoning goes, but that's not going to be a big deal. I've got double strike. Uh, I'm going to activate this now, just to go ahead and get rid of uh, get rid of this rosemary, uh, just because I don't want it on the board. I, I don't want him to be able to potentially like negate something, even though it the only card that it would be negating would be like domain. Um, but I don't want that to happen, you know. Uh, but the cherub sprout goes. That's fine. There's no real way that I see him being able to clear this off the board through Double Strike and the Masterpiece, uh, especially since Domain is up. So, like, he has a good situation as far as his deck is naturally utilizing big monsters because of the trees with, you know, Hermitry, Sage Koya, stuff like that. But those aren't bigger than, um, than Masterpiece, and Masterpiece is unaffected by monsters, uh, so it can't be like, he can't mill um, the Martial Leaf. And uh, destroy it. Uh, I don't care. Okay, so yeah, Sylvan Charity is on the bottom of his deck now. Uh, this copy plant can be a level four, uh, but not worried about that. We've got Domain up. Uh, like Domain doesn't doesn't prevent Domain doesn't like let him do any of this stuff. Um, so like he's summoning all of these, but um, but it's uh, and he's got like three tuners on the board. So that copy plant means that he has access to a lot of different like not stuff that he would be able to do, but this domain is up. Now domain as a card is not that good as far as uh, as far as looking into the context of the true Draco format, because the true Draco decks in general are very non-reliant on extra decks because you know you play mirrors with this deck uh, and all that other stuff. But so what you get is uh, you get um, like these in the side deck usually of decks in the OCG uh, because it's just not that good in the uh, in the context of the format. But against decks like this, against Rogue, Domain is always amazing. Uh, but so he's putting uh, Peacekeeper on top, which I can kind of agree with. Uh, but so we'll use this uh, to go ahead and get rid of um, get rid of one of those back rows. I'm not too worried about this. Uh, we'll get rid of one of these uh, fresh sets. Uh, that's a terraforming. That's not anything that we needed to even worry about. Okay, so we've got duality here, which we could probably duality into something like another card of demise, another power card. Uh, you literally never like special summon in this deck unless it's on your opponent's turn, and there is a card of demise, and we will fucking take it. Absolutely. And so we'll use this card of demise just to draw into hopefully some things. That's terraforming, which is dead. That's another card of demise, which is live, but not this turn. Um, and then we've got, uh, we've got the warning. So, at this point, my deck is really thin, so I'm probably not going to start willy-nilly activating anything anymore. Um, this masterpiece can be beaten over by something if he has an out to the domain, but none of the trees in his deck are big enough to, uh, to out the stuff. And, uh, also, like, there's just triple warning. So I'm actually just going to discard both these cards. I actually just don't care. Um, like, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten into all that needs to be gotten into as far as 
this deck. I've got eight cards left. Um, and that's not just that's just something that doesn't actually uh, actually matter to me as a whole. But so he's able to do Peacekeeper, do all this nonsense, but it's not going to matter. Um, he's able to use Peacekeeper to bring back Lone Fire, and he'll be able to Lone Fire into a card we. Uh, but like I think he just really made a subpar application of his Lone Fire Soul Charge. Because I mean, even just Lone Fire Soul Charge by itself is typically like just a huge board of super relevant things. Like I was expecting maybe to see like Titanic Galaxy, Felgrand, and like something like an Omega or a Crystal Wing. Like I was expecting to see those. But instead, uh, I'm not seeing any of those. I didn't see any of those. Uh, and that makes me kind of upset to a, to a tiny, tiny degree. Because Lone Fire Soul Charge is so powerful. It's one of the most powerful interactions in the game, even today. If you can just low key open Lone Fire Soul Charge, like if you were playing Sylvans, I would. If I was playing Sylvans, I would probably play like triple Left Arm Offering just because if you open Lone Fire, which is a three of, and Soul Charge, which you could play four of with Left Arm, like you don't care about banishing your hand with Left Arm because you're going to be drawing cards off Hermitry and all that sort of stuff, and it's just gonna you're just gonna get it all back. But uh, okay, so this. I can do I can do double <laughs> double masterpiece. Uh, might as well, right? Uh, so we will just do uh, we will just do this. So now this one's unaffected by spell and trap, and uh, and now these will uh, trigger to destroy a monster and uh, the spell that's back here. So we'll destroy this, and then this will destroy the unknown, and then these both are fueled for one. Uh, what did I pop? Uh, a Princess Sprout. That card. That card's actually just really good. 100% um, really good. <laughs> but, so we'll attack with these. Uh, was it game if I just... Yeah, it was game if I just popped both and attacked. Uh, but it's whatever. We're we're not in the business of hypotheticals anymore. Because of the fact that we're just doing this. This gets the uh, attack boost from Domain. Which is so cool. Uh, but, so we'll use this to pop the, uh, the field spell. Just because... I don't want him to continue like revealing things and doing stuff like that. But this deck is very grindy. It's very, uh, it's very like lockish essentially. Like I said, Domain is not as powerful in the OCG format where this deck exists than um, than it is like here. But it's definitely a card that they either main or side when they're playing this deck because of its strong application against all of this stuff against Rogue essentially. Um, but the mirror of this deck, like, Domain's just dead, because obviously you're both trying to Domain, or if you're playing its regular True Draco, then uh, you have the issue of, um, of they can just put out big things in general without using a, uh, a field spell. Okay, so, he's doing this to pop these, so I guess he just doesn't give a shit about the fact that Domain is still up, and Domain is still locking him from, uh, from doing literally everything, but he got rid of my strike and my warning, so good on him, but, uh, but now what I've got is I've got one key pop that I can use, literally on this card. Um, so we'll just we'll just pop this. It, that seems pretty simple, right? Uh, these are both unaffected by traps anyway, but I mean like might as well. Uh, but his glow up bulb has already come back. His spore has already come back. Like this is this card just doesn't mean anything. But like this is just game here, isn't it? This is twenty nine fifty twenty nine fifty. That's uh, I think that's exactly five. Uh, yeah, it's exactly 59. <laughs> wow, wow! What magic numbers? What magic numbers we have hit? But essentially, this deck is like super slow to play. Uh, I definitely made an incorrect card sequencing turn one, but luckily it was very minor because of all the overlap that this uh, deck has back upon itself that you can use to your advantage and all that stuff. But uh, but basically. I'm going to be playing more videos with this deck, and then I'm also going to be exploring other true Draco and true King variants as well, because they're actually just really fun to see operate, because they all operate on an incredibly different demographic, as well as the hybrids, like with Yang Zing and Cosmo. I did some videos on true King Yang Zing in the past. I definitely am going to be probably going back to those and doing a little bit more of those as well, because of the fact that those decks are just super cool to pilot, um, and they're very in-depth in terms of what they, uh, what they do. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon in the reward tiers. At the 
end of this month, I'm going to be giving away a box of Maximum Crisis when it is released in stores. So if you're interested in that, then definitely go check out the Patreon. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if you want to see more True, Dra True Draco and True King, and specifically this deck. I'm going to be playing it a little bit more, but let me know if it's something that you like to see. But take care, guys.